does the kidney concentrate the urine, one might ask? Through three steps, filtration, reabsorption, and secretion. Filtration is the movement of fluid from, from the blood into the lumen of the nephron. Reabsorption is the process of moving substances in the filtrate from the lumen of the tubule back into the blood flowing through the paratubular capillaries. And secretion removes selected molecules from the blood and adds them to the filtrate in the tubule lumen. Overall, the kidneys regulate extracellular fluid volume, maintain ion balance, regulate the pH level, excrete waste products, and produce a few hormones. They play a vital role in mass balance of the human body. First, we need to know that the functional units of the kidney are the nephrons. There are about a million nephrons in the kidneys, and they are primarily responsible for extracting toxins and other waste materials from the blood. Blood. Blood plays a crucial part in the kidneys by transporting oxygen, hormones, and other nutrients around the body and defending the body against diseases. Blood flows from the afferent arterial into a ball-like network of capillaries known as the glomerulus. From there, it enters the efferent arterioles and then into the paratubular capillaries. In essence, the main job of the kidneys is the homeostatic regulation of the water and ion content in the blood. Hence, the kidneys convert blood plasma into urine and expel it from the body in the form of urine. Blood plasma is the clear fluid that surrounds blood cells. At different stages, as blood plasma flows through the nephrons and its composition changes, it is referred to differently. In the Bowman's capsule, blood plasma has no protein and is called glomerular filtrate. And in the renal tubule, it's called tubular fluid. The blood plasma is only called urine when it is moving into the collecting duct and is being transported to the bladders. Now, I to and secretion in more detail. Filtration. This takes place only in the glomerulus and Bowman's capsule. The filtration of plasma into the kidney tubule is a first step in urine formation. Here, plasma that has been filtrated produces glomerular filtrate, as mentioned earlier. Only 20% of the plasma that passes through the glomerulus capillaries is filtered in the Bowman's capsule. This is done so that there isn't a sludge of blood cells and protein that can't flow out of the glomerulus. Hence, these 20% can flow into the nephrons. The remaining 80% that's also known as the filtration fraction flows through the capillaries and into the systemic circulation. Even as the 20% of plasma flows through the nephrons, 90 of it ends up being reabsorbed into the paratubular capillaries, creating urine. This is the action of filtration. the proximal tube, the descending loop of Henle, the thick ascending loop of Henle, the distal tube, and the collecting duct. However, the majority of it is done in the loop of Henle. The loop of Henle is the portion of the renal tube that creates dilute urine and sets up con the conditions needed to make concentrated urine. It can do this because of its different permeabilities. The descending limb has low to no permeability to water, whereas the ascending limb is permeable to water. The loop of Henle concentrates the interstitium and makes it desirable for water to leave. It is also what makes the concentration of sodium chloride high in the medulla and gives it its salty taste. The more water there is in the renal system, the less concentrated the urine is. 
Antidiuretic hormone is the hormone that regulates water reabsorption in the kidneys. So if the levels of ADH are high, there is more excess water, the urine concentration is low, and consequently there is more urine. The average glomerular filtration rate is 125 milliliters per minute. Once filtration is done, certain substances are reabsorbed from the lumen in the tubules to the blood. This is reabsorption. Overall, the process starts with the active transport of sodium from the tubule lumen to the extracellular fluid that creates a transepithelial electrical gradient in which the lumen is more negative than the extracellular fluid. Anions then follow the positively charged sodium out of the lumen. The net movement of sodium and anions from the lumen to the extracellular fluid causes water to follow by osmosis. The loss of volume from the lumen increases the concentration of solutes, including potassium, calcium, and urea, left behind in the filtrate. An unchanged amount of solute in a smaller volume produces an increased concentration. Once luminal solute concentrations are higher than solute concentrations in the extracellular fluid, the solutes are free to diffuse out of the lumen if the epithelium of the tubule is permeable to them. The sodium can then be actively transported or co-transported passively with glucose molecules, bicarbonate, amino acids, ions, and various metabolites. The urine concentration process is secretion. Secretion is when other materials from the plasma are being placed into the filtrate. This means that to some extent, well, it's the opposite of reabsorption. Secretion takes place not only in the pro proximal convoluted tubule, but also in the distal tubule and the collecting duct. The major role of secretion is to balance ions in the blood. Secretion works best in lowering excess potassium that could cause cardiac arrest. It secretes them into the collecting duct with aldosterone. Secretion and reabsorption play a crucial role in homeostasis. As said in Alice in Wonderland, where do I start? Well, start at the beginning. And then when you get to the end, stop. Shake it on the floor like dice, pot your heart, let me see that ass roll, 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 roll. Let's get it, get it.